Quick background story. I, 27 male, got married pretty young at 20. My ex told me she was pregnant. It would have looked bad to both our families plus the people in our neighborhood, and they pushed us into getting married before the baby was born. I only found out a year and a half after her son was born that he was never mine, after I started having doubts and got a paternity test. We divorced, and it was a huge thing trying to get myself removed from the birth certificate and not be responsible for him. My family was really against this because of how long we've been a family. They finally stopped leaving me alone about being involved and haven't mentioned anything in years. Present time. My older brother's getting married, and I don't know why nobody decided to tell me this, but his wife wanted my ex invited. But they didn't tell me because he wanted me there and thought I wouldn't show up at all if I knew. So I guess in a way he was right because the second I saw them at the church, I got mad and started asking my mom and everyone else, what the hell? One of my brothers told me the bride wanted her there since they became close back when they were sisters-in-law and he had to invite her. It was a small wedding too with like 30 people in one backyard and I could see her kid with her. That's just not something I would be around. I told my brother I'm sorry but this isn't going to happen. Had a lot of emotions hitting me at once and everything was overwhelming. He apologized for ambushing me but he told me to stay. But that was way too much for me and I ended up leaving an hour before the ceremony. Suddenly. I'm an a-hole, and a few relatives are mad at me. My new sister-in-law is the most pissed off because it could have been a chance to talk and enjoy a family moment together. Now my brother's going to remember that I wasn't there. Feels like a lot going on right now, since I'm still mad at them for everything. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. They ambushed you with an ex who tried to pawn off someone else's kid on you. That's not a small thing. I don't see how the bride could remain friends with someone so dishonest. Not the a-hole at all. I would be so mad with everyone in the family for doing that to you. So disrespectful from your brother to do that to you. Especially for not telling you beforehand. Also, it's no one's business that you fix things with your ex or talk to her if you don't want. It's your life and you're an adult that can make choices for yourself. You did the right thing to leave. Not the a-hole, but your family are. They knew this would blindside and upset you and did it anyway. Why don't your feelings matter? You were lied to, used, and let's be honest. Had you not had the DNA test done, you'd be paying for that child until they were 18. What sort of horrific woman does that? After cheating on you with an obvious loser, as she didn't foist the child on them. Tell your family you have the right to be hurt, upset, and disgusted with them. They chose your ex over you, and don't understand why that is so upsetting. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Don't let anyone tell you you don't matter. You're just as valid as they are. My husband and I are majorly vacation incompatible. He gets carsick on long rides to the point of being miserable, and I'm terrified of flying. It's usually not so bad when he's the one driving, but he also sees it as a massive hassle. Driving obviously takes way longer and is more effort than just hopping on a plane. We usually just go somewhere local if we're in the mood for a trip, maybe an hour and a half drive at most. My husband has to travel often for work. He and his business partner fly and stay together on these trips, and I've joked in the past that his business partner sees him more than I do. I understand that it's the nature of his job and I respect that. I just miss him. I've been toying with the idea of joining my husband on one of these trips for a while, but it's only recently that I came up with the idea of surprising him. Even if it turned out that he was incredibly busy, I figured we could squeeze in at least one nice meal together at some point and I could explore the city alone. I put this plan into action after he left for his flight. The drive from our home to where he flew was about 14 hours, so obviously it was a long way to go. Still, I thought it would be worth it and road tripping by myself is something I haven't done in years. When I arrived, thanks to traffic and some other scheduling errors, it was relatively late at night. I had the hotel name and room number from my husband for emergency purposes, so I went up and knocked. No one answered, so I called him and hoped the surprise would still be as exciting despite the late hour. He picked up, clearly half asleep, and I told him to come out of his room. He finally did with some convincing. The door my husband came out of wasn't the one I'd been knocking on, but the one directly beside it. I explained I had come to surprise him and apologized for arriving when I did. His reaction was far from the one I expected. He was incredibly angry. He said it was irresponsible of me to drive such a long way without telling him. He said this was an unnecessary distraction and that he had to be up early the next morning. He also said that there had been a mix-up with their booking details and that they had been given a single room with a king bed instead of the two rooms they had requested. That had been a non-issue with two close friends, but now that I was there, we had to go to the lobby to book another room. It's the next day. I'm now sat in a hotel room alone, where I've been for most of the time. 
coming here to find out if he overreacted or if I really ducked up. Am I the a-hole? 1. There was no mix-up on the rooms. 2. Hotels may screw up a reservation, but they have rollaways. 3. Your husband is doing business with his partner. 4. Not the a-hole, but you are a blind fool. Your husband is having more than a professional relationship with his business partner. He's angry because he almost got caught. Not the a-hole because you caught your husband cheating when that wasn't your intention. If there was a spare hotel room for you to check into, there was no reason for them to share the room and the bed. Showing up unannounced on a business trip is not good, but in this case, it really worked out. Not the a-hole. He wasn't happy to see you. In fact, he was angry. That's a bizarre reaction. People travel on business trips with their spouses all the time, almost always at the request of the person traveling for business. He's sleeping in a king-size bed with his business partner instead of you in your double or queen-size bed. His business partner is almost certainly his lover. Don't say one word or question anything. Go back home if he wants you to, and get the best darn lawyer you can find. You'll need to protect your financial future and discover his assets before he can hide them. Again, do not breathe a word of suspicion. If you decide to divorce him, let him find out while he's on a business trip by being served at his hotel. If indeed his business partner was even in the room. Did he let you in the room at all? If not, he could have had literally anyone sharing that bed with him. When he went back in the room to get his things, I stood by the door and saw inside. He didn't seem like he was trying to keep me out or hide anything, and I saw his business partner asleep in the bed. Is his business partner male or female? Because that factors into this a lot. Otherwise, he could just be overreacting because he was tired and woken up, but it depends on how he has treated you the rest of the time. Male Divorced This past holiday season was our third since the split. We share 50-50 custody of our 13-year-old son, but since my ex has a demanding work schedule, our son lives with me full-time outside of holidays and birthdays. Son knows he's always welcome to head to his dad and stepmoms during dad's time to see his half-siblings, but whether or not his dad will be there is totally random, and ex generally doesn't respond to son's communications in between. Although we technically switch off holidays, my ex had my son for every holiday since the split, which I'm very unhappy about, and I've already gone back to court once over. Basically, we discuss in advance when we will do the custody handover, and X always creates some situation where I'm required to choose between not seeing my son during my custody time on a big family holiday and spending the holiday with my ex and his new family, which means not seeing my family on holidays, in which I'm painted as unreasonable for not caving. I know my son is desperate for more time with his dad, so I've always been over backwards to deal with this and cut my losses, but I can't do that anymore. I'm remarried and have an infant. This was her first Christmas, and my husband was adamant that I not skip another holiday with him, our family, to go spend it with my ex and our son. Son was supposed to be with us, and we were planning to drive three hours to husband's parents to spend Christmas Day with them. Christmas morning, ex says son's not allowed to go because stepmom's family traveled six hours to see him, and it would be rude to leave. Son says, I won't see dad again till Easter, and you know he won't talk to me till then if I leave now. You're just going to need to stay here. I told him that it was time to go, that we promised stepdad we'd spend Christmas together with his parents. Son says, that's too bad. They'll have to go without you. I want to see you today, but dad says I'm not allowed to go, so we'll have to stay here. This exact thing had happened word for word the day before when I went to pick him up for Christmas Eve. I put my foot down and said, I am leaving. You can choose to go with me or not. And when he again asked me to stay with him, I left. He is still enraged now two weeks later and says that this is proof that I love my new family more. He won't talk to me, his stepdad, or the therapist he sees every week. Literally not a single word. Was I the a-hole here? This is looking like the kind of thing my son will mention bitterly in his eulogy, so I'm starting to doubt my momming, as he is technically right that my daughter won't remember this Christmas, and I could have rescheduled Christmas with my husband, his family, as I have every other year. My mom says I'm being cold, and my friends who are also divorced moms have been telling me I need to be better at keeping the balance between my son and my new family. Not the a-hole. You are dealing with parental alienation. Why is it more important that your ex's wife and her family be happy than your husband and his family? Your son made a choice. He assumed that he could control you because you have allowed him to until this point. He is a teenager who has too much power. He will get over this. You need to draw much firmer lines with your ex. I would recommend going back to court. Not the a-hole. Your ex won't talk to your son from Christmas till Easter, 
and that's somehow your fault? You shouldn't have to sacrifice every holiday that you have because your ex can't be bothered to make more time for his son. Unfortunately, I don't have any solution here, but your son shouldn't be putting this on you. Is it possible at all that he's insisting on you two spending the holidays together because of some sense of normalcy, pre-divorce, it might be giving him? Not the a-hole. Your ex is toxic, and it sounds like your son is learning toxic behavior from him. He didn't want to leave his dad's because his dad wouldn't talk to him, and now he's doing the same to you. You need to go back to court and have something arranged so your ex can't mess up the custody plans. Talk to your son, even if he won't answer back. Don't badmouth his father. Explain that you understand he's hurt you didn't spend Christmas with him, but that it was his choice that didn't happen. My, 23 male, parents, 43 male, 45 female, divorced when I was 8. I stayed with my dad full time and went to visit my mom two weekends a month. My dad stayed single for all my childhood and my adolescence. I met Josh, 34 male, one and a half years ago, because he was my boss at the company. I started working half-time while finishing college, same field. Well, Josh and I started getting along so well and hanging out. I even met his wife, Mary, 30 female, a couple of times. Well, for my 22nd birthday, I decided to throw a party and invite Josh and Mary to come. My dad was there too, of course, and I introduced them to him. They shook hands, shared some info, and that was it. That was their whole interaction during my birthday party. Like two weeks later, Josh came to me saying that my dad was amazing and a fun dude, and then let me know that they, he and his wife, had some beers with him and from that point they became best friends. My dad would constantly go to their house on weekends to have some grill or whatever. They also invited me, but I never went. Three months ago, Josh came to me to tell me that my dad was a jerk and a homewrecker who seduced his wife to cheat on him and got her pregnant. I called my dad to know what was going on, and he told me that Mary left Josh to be with my dad because they had an affair and she was pregnant, and also told me that they love each other. I found out that they've been having an affair for a year, almost immediately after they met for the first time. They plan to get married after the twin babies, boy and girl, are born and Mary's divorce is finalized. Not gonna lie, I feel guilty because if I hadn't invited Mary and Josh, they would have never met my dad, and this wouldn't have happened and I can't look at my dad the same way I did. He went after a married woman who has a 10-year-old boy. I know he's a great dad to me. I love him very much, and I know he will be a great stepdad and dad to his new children, but I can't just look at him the same way I did. I still talk to him, but try to keep my distance as much as I can. He invited me to their baby shower, but I said I couldn't go because I didn't feel comfortable. He asked me why, so I said, Dad, to be honest, I can't look at you the same way. You went after a married woman with a child. You got her pregnant and now want to act like nothing has happened. He told me this doesn't affect me in any way and that his love life shouldn't be my problem, but I had to quit the job since Josh became insufferable. My mom and friends say I should support my dad because I don't know what Josh and Mary's relationship was like, which is true, I don't, but I can't help but feel guilty and sorry for Josh. Not the a-hole. He slept with your boss's wife. He can't pull the it's none of your business card when he aimed his adultery at your career. Like what the duck? Not the a-hole. Your father should have thought about the ramifications for you before embarking on an affair with your boss's wife. But you're also not to blame for your father's actions, and Josh was an a-hole to put that on you. How were you to know your 45-year-old father was going to abscond with 30-year-old Mary when you introduced them? You couldn't. Not the a-hole. Your dad slept with your boss's wife and kind of ruined your life. Your relationship with your dad is strained, and you quit your job because your boss blamed you. And he had the nerve to say this doesn't affect you and his love life shouldn't be your problem. The audacity. Not the a-hole, and it probably would have happened with someone else. Their marriage was not that solid if she was so easily able to cheat. No one can steal someone else's spouse. The spouse is a person, not an object. They have free will. They are the ones cheating. This Mary is wholly responsible for her own situation. She could have said no at any time. I, 20 female, and my dad, I don't even know, male, have a very strained relationship. When I was young, six-ish, his first fiance told me that he hated me and my mom and she was going to replace us. I told him and he denied that she said it. She then told me at seven that she was prettier than me and my mom. He again denied she said anything like that but my mom was furious and confronted the two. The fiancé refused to talk to my mom, and my dad blew it off as I was being dramatic. Before his fiancé, 
He would get me every weekend and then Mondays for dinner. Once he got with her, the Mondays stopped, then the weekends. So I lost contact with him for many years. During that time, he had my twin sisters. So, for their sake, I tried having a relationship with him, but again it failed because he had chosen his new family over me. Eventually, the two broke up. They never got married, but not before I saw their wedding planning folder. Her niece was to be the flower girl, and I was to be in the back row away from him, her, and my siblings, which of course made me angry and hurt me deeply. I confronted him, and his excuse was she loved her niece, so I took this as he didn't love me, and I went no contact. Also, want to mention his mom convinced him I wasn't his, so he never signed my birth certificate and wasn't in the delivery room and got a DNA test done. Fast forward to his new fiancé. She's nice and has a set of twins on her own, and she treats my dad and sisters well from what I see. They're happy. I've had my own son and my dad is now trying to fix our relationship to see him. He assumes me and my son are going to attend his wedding and asked if he could bring my son's outfit to see if it fit, and I informed him we wouldn't be going. Since then, I've received two texts from him, but he calls my aunt frequently to tell her he's tried calling me, he hasn't, and that I won't talk to him. Since declining this wedding invite, I've received three more invitations in the mail and a registry gift request. I've already declined on every invitation, and my mom and brother agree that he burned his bridge and has to live with it, but my aunt feels I'm being too harsh. So here I am, looking for strangers' unbiased opinions. So am I the a-hole? Keep your kids safe. I don't know if you are right or if you are wrong, but when this is your feelings and he wasn't a responsible parent in a bad situation in the past, then your kid is probably safest when he has no relationship at all with his grandparent. Not the a-hole. He sent multiple invitations? Who does he think he is? Hogwarts? The thing about repairing a relationship is that it has to happen slowly, and it can, and it can move no faster than the person more reluctant to reconcile. Your father has hurt you a lot over the years, and it takes baby steps to fix it. I think inviting you to his wedding is a good conciliatory gesture. His attempt to push you after repeatedly saying no is not. When you needed a parent to protect you the most, he chose to deny and ignore you. Now he wants to fix the relationship because he wants access to your son. You keep healthy boundaries in place, so he sends relatives to guilt trip you. The traits of a grandfather, patient, protective, loving, story sharing, teachers, etc. are all things your father has failed to demonstrate time and time again in your own life. Being in your son's life is a privilege, not a right, not the a-hole.